हेलो प्रभाकरण सर प्रभाकरण सर यस सर एम आई ऑडिबल सर यस यस ओके सर वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ कैमटेक I welcome all respected officers, participant members, and guests who are attending today's webinar. Today's webinar is about standard practices and of measurement in SNT installations, and it will be presented by Shri Prabhakaran Sir, who is Senior Manager Business Development of Messrs. Fluke Systems Private Limited, Bangalore, and his team. And I thank them for their sincere efforts and cooperation in making possible today's presentation. Uh, it is requested to please keep your microphone off during the presentation and if anybody is having any queries please mention them in the chat box we will take them up one by one after the presentation is over so without taking much time and now i request prabhakaran sir to please uh, continue with this presentation yeah thank you sir uh, good afternoon to all and uh, first of all thanks a lot for uh, inviting us for uh, addressing you people and it's an honor for us to address uh, Indian Railway employees and officers on a very critical uh, subject like measuring device for uh, signal application ap applications. Okay, I will try to do justice for your time because my understanding on uh, signal and uh, telecom in Indian Railways are maybe limited, and you can help me to understand better. And what I have built here a presentation uh, considering. your requirement what i understand and what products we can offer to you in maintaining those systems let me share the screen just give me a moment please i hope you are able to uh, see my screen yes sir it is visible now yeah i will also uh, close my uh, video so that uh, the bandwidth will be better okay yes and sir. during the q and a i may switch it on again yeah, yeah. uh This is the topic what I have uh, chosen that flu products for uh, railway SNT maintenance, and here uh, I'll be covering uh, before getting into the maintenance and the the real uh, subject of yours. I'll be giving a kind of introduction to Fluke and its product line, and then I'll be getting into the the applications where uh, we can pitch our products for you. And uh, in case if I am missing any of those uh, points or any. Uh, applications or any of those uh, pain areas where you need the test equipments please have a discussion at the end so that we can uh, fluke also listens to our customers and build new products that's why we can think of building some new products based on your inputs uh, going forward uh, fluke corporation is a 74 year old uh, uh, brand or company having manufacturing facilities in multiple uh, continents and we are a, we are started by a great individual called john fluke senior uh, way back in 1948 in the us and you can see him in the in the background of this picture where he started his company and he built the uh, first power meters under this brand for his previous employer g and today we are uh, more than 3000 employees working across uh, the globe and uh, manufacturing facilities in various countries uh, and in india we have around uh, 90 plus uh, employees working on the sales and service portion of it and we also have a 250 member team working on the uh, research and development and engineering uh, based in bangalore and uh, we are we are part of we are not only a single brand we have multiple brands together that is fluke is uh known for uh, various test equipments that is fluke biomedical fluke networks fluke uh, process instrumentation fluke calibration fluke uh, industrial division like that there are five or six uh, companies are available under fluke and we are also part of a larger organization called uh, fortive corporation and there are many other brands 
like Qualitrol or uh, Tektronix are part of Fluke or part of Fortive. And that's why we are not a small company. We are actually part of a large organization in uh, in the world. And uh, Fluke uh, and Tektronix are the major brands under the test and measurement platform of Fluke uh, for team. When it comes to Fluke, uh, the motto of uh, John Fluke Senior is still relevant for us and what he has uh, developed uh, 74 years before that the when he, he developed his first product, he was thinking of user safety. That is all these majority of our products are actually for the electrical measurements and electrical measurements as you know, even 50 volt or uh, 30 milliamps can kill a person. That's why user safety is very, very important. And every product what we check out for electrical application is comes with uh, the best uh, class of uh, safety. That is category uh, of electrical safety is tested and certified by at least two or three agencies. Then comes the fluke uh, test equipment as a trustworthy tool. Because you may find uh, a test instrument for uh, very low price and very high price, and you may find a fluke also in between. And uh, when it comes to the measurement, when you can measure something, you can manage something. Okay, that's why we, we think that the measuring devices, what we supply must be a trustworthy one, so that people will not have much of doubt in his mind when you do a measurement. When you are in doubt, then it is difficult for you to take decisions. That's why we give a trustworthy, reliable, rugged and accurate device for measurement purpose. And then the final one and very important for all of us, and even this sentence will be available in every office of ours in the entry itself. The customer should always get more than what they uh, thought they paid for. That is the kind of value we deliver. That is when we uh, give a product, it's not just a product, a, a bus, a, uh, piece of uh, plastic and electronics. It is something which we are giving as a solution and you are going to get a better value than what we paid for. That is, even if you are paying 10,000 rupees for a DMM, we will be giving you better value compared to what you have paid. In that 74 years of journey, Fluke has developed or uh, innovated many new products and uh, changed the way people do the measurement or the live today or do predictive maintenance or maintenance in today's world. Uh, as I said, 1948, it started. And in 1977, Fluke has actually uh, launched its first handheld multimeter. And till such time, multimeters were there, but it was bulky and tabletop. Now, uh, in 1977, we launched the 80220A, and this became the world's first handheld DMM. And similarly, in 2005, I'm not reading all those things because it will take uh, too much of time. In 2005, when we launched our first thermal images, thermal images were available before 2005, but it was too costly and it was a monopoly of one or two companies. And they were charging some premium and thermal images were not affordable for maintenance kind of application. When we launched our first thermal imager at one third or one fourth of the then uh, market price. Today, uh, we are the preferred thermal imager brand in many countries. And in 2013, we launched our first connected devices. That is when people were started talking about the industry 4.0 revolution, that is connected maintenance and connected uh, instrumentation. This was the first uh, devices we launched for connected application. And that was too early for us or for the industry to understand what exactly we are talking. But today we have the largest uh, connected device portfolio under our test and measurement uh, brand. And then uh, comes in 2019, we have launched our acoustic images, acoustic images uh, for leak and the partial discharge detection. Okay. And this is now revolutionizing the way people detect the leaks, even for railway kind of applications where uh, you use uh, pneumatics controls for the even stopping the or the pneumatic brakes and all. And if these pneumatic lines are leaking, then the efficiency or uh, the uh, efficiency will be very less or it may not work at times. And it is very difficult for you to find out the leaks 
using soap water or the traditional methods and that is where we are changing the way people see the leaks using an acoustic imager and in 2021 we also launched a very interesting uh, climbmeter which is which can measure voltage and current using the clamp itself no need to put a additional probe to find out the, the voltage that is how we are changing the way people measure the voltage and current when as i said uh, the safety safety is very very important for uh, you and us because if you are playing with voltage and current then it can take your life and that is why when when you do these measurements the in between you and the uh, the dangerous voltages or uh, currents are only your mul multimeter and its leads that's why every instruments what we manufacture are designed according to iec 61010 standard safety standard and uh, manufactured as per that same standard and then tested for its compliance with uh, laboratories external laboratories like ul or tuv kind of laboratories and then we get that certificate and then it comes to the market uh, and when i say the category rating how this category relates to you is basically when you are into uh, track and field where the it is all open and where the the poles and the lines may be available in open condition and the poles may be exposed to even uh, thunder lighting or uh, any kind of voltage levels and this are the areas where the expected high voltage levels are 6000 6, volt and above that is you can expect a higher voltage levels uh, above 6000 in open field and the the wherever you have this uh, electrical uh, distribution transformers or distribution uh, stations or the substations and then comes to the uh, work areas or your workshops and all where you may be working at uh, 440 volt or uh, uh for 400 volt lines that is three phase uh, systems uh, especially your shop floors and then workshops where you may have to this the higher voltage level expected is uh, up to 4000 volt and above and then comes to your offices or your uh, uh, admin uh, buildings where you will find uh, a voltage you can find the voltage levels up to uh sorry here i am talking about here it is 8000 and here it is 6000 and in admin block and all you may find up to a uh, 400 4000 volt of uh, transients and in category one rated areas where your offices homes and all where you will find a voltage you can find a voltage above 2000 volt that means uh, there is a reason for uh, the safety risk in your electrical systems where you have 110 or 230 volt present it, the highest voltage transient expectation is up to four uh, four thousand volt for kv and where the three phase lines are there lt lines are there there the expected volts are up to six thousand volt or six kv and above that the exposed lines and the open fields where it can be up to eight kv and above even sometimes 12 kv also you may find and interestingly you are also working at various voltage levels and this is where you have to choose your measuring devices appropriately if you choose a, a category one rated dmm or a oscilloscope or any other uh, test instruments and if you use it here then you will be at risk of uh, uh, electrical shock or electrical hazards okay that's why this is very important and that's why we uh, stress upon this uh, particular uh, reason or the safety thing and every product of our uh, multimeter or clamp meter which is used for electricity then it will be coming with a appropriate safety standard and it is marked and tested by a third party agency and apart from that portability is another uh, big thing because when you are doing any work in the field you need a portable very uh, lightweight and handheld device so that you can easily take it to the field and then do the work and similarly ruggedness even uh, when we are taking these instruments and working there is a possibility that it may even fall down and you may have to continue your work after picking up the unit that's why we design rugged units so that it will not fail you in between your work similarly the accuracy levels 
we get the best accuracy is what we can achieve or what anyone can achieve in in our products and uh, safety as i said safety is the best thing which we offer and ease of use most of our products we reduce the number of uh, the knobs and then push buttons so that you will not get confused in using in the field and it you will be able to use it with well within 10 15 minutes of time and then we comply with all the rigid standards required to for that product or the application and when i say the safety standards you can see the the uh, cheapest uh, climbmeter of ours we have tested uh, for this is actually designed for category 3 and 600 volt we could test it up to 17 or 18 kV and it's supposed to withstand only 6 kV and we did that test and then we realized that we could go up to that but we have also conducted a similar study for our own understanding and we realized that there are plants which actually fails much before the designed levels and many don't come with this kind of uh, labeling or external test certificates and interestingly most of the suppliers don't give a test probes and leads which is tested for this kind of voltage levels but fluke gives you those test probes and leads which is again tested for such higher voltages to ensuring that from this tip to the instrument is completely safe equally when it comes to test and measurement uh, for every accuracy levels whether it is for a laboratory or whether it is for the field applications like yours or for electrical application electricians application we have a product line that is if you take this as the uh, accuracy pyramid we have products for every range of things and we have the calibration equipments for uh, calibration in the uh, laboratories like ERTLs or even for RDSO kind of laboratories <coughs> and then we also have test uh, the calibration for various parameters like electronic or el electrical parameters or physical parameters like uh, temperature pressure flow and mechanical parameters we can we have these uh, standards then we also have products for measurement for uh, various low uh, accuracy applications from starting from multimeters to vibration testers when it comes to our product lines you can find uh, the major products we always talk is the digital multimeter which, which is actually a stethoscope for many of your applications or for electrical or instrumentation kind of application you need this as a tool a very basic tool for you and we have the uh, multimeters from the uh, true armus multimeter or we have the average multimeter and we have the specialty multimeters also especially when it comes to your uh, applications like accelerometer uh, axle counters where you will uh, you may have to have higher accuracy and higher frequency bandwidth those kind of uh, dmms are specialist multimeters when you have very basic level requirements for home application and all you need not to go for a true rms multimeter you can also go for a average uh, responding multimeter sorry and uh, we also have the highest accuracy multimeters like eight and a half digit multimeter also in our portfolio similarly clam meters when you want to measure higher currents you can have this kind of clam meters which comes with uh, ac and dc capabilities and all those recording uh, features and other things for your application maybe your uh, requirement for current uh, will be much lesser compared to the voltage measurements but this also will be applicable for you to maintain your uh, the signal and uh, telecom kind of devices and systems then we also have a very interesting installation tester when you have buildings and other facilities where you want to ensure that the building safety is mandatory then you have to have elcbs and uh, uh, rcds in place but many a time we don't test it this elcbs and rcds or whether it is working or not we have a device or installation tester which can test this rcds and elcbs whether it is working or not without even power and then we have the digital thermometers railway use a lot of uh, non-contact uh, thermometers from us and our sister brand called Raytec and Raytec also is part of actually Fluke and uh, it is part of Fluke uh, uh, process instruments and uh, these instruments are all meant for temperature measurement whether it is contact type or non-contact type we have this product and then comes the earth testers Earthing is very, very important for uh, instrumentation engineers or even signaling engineers or even for electrical engineers work. Uh, that means if earthing is not proper, everything else can go wrong. 
that's a designing the proper earthing and verification of earthing in your facility on a regular basis will ensure the safety and functioning of your equipments in long run and then we also have indoor air quality tools which may not be of your interest uh, <coughs> sorry then comes the power quality analysis which actually gives you the uh, clear cut idea about what is the kind of quality of power you are feeding into your systems and uh, subsystems or your is present in your facility because when the uh, earthing system is good then the power what you are getting from the utilities or you or your own generation may be harming your equipments and installations there also you may have to verify what is the kind of power you are generating sometimes if the power quality is very bad whether there is a transient or a harmonics present then your signals may not work if it is interfering with your signaling systems because today it is more important because you may be in a crossroads like a analog signaling to a digital signaling era that is you are migrating to the digital uh, technologies and digital technologies are always more prone to power quality variations that means if the power quality is bad then the digital signaling systems and the communication system can uh, act very weirdly and that can create more of problem to you and similarly we have battery analyzers which can be used for battery testing uh, battery condition analysis in uh, online conditions like you need not to take it away you can just uh, go to wherever it is installed you can verify and then find out whether what is the condition of this and then comes the oscilloscopes when you really want to do uh, the uh, oscilloscope measurements or the see the waveforms what you are measuring it is very difficult for you to carry a benchtop uh, oscilloscope to the field especially in the uh, railway field uh, railway tracks and all it is difficult for you to get a plug point to power on a oscilloscope that is where we our uh, scope meters which is a ba completely battery operated completely isolated oscilloscope uh, this can help you to uh, identify problems and help you to see the signals what you are seeing in the field and then we also have field calibrators which can help you to identify I mean, especially when you have the mechanical uh, signaling systems where you may use 0 to uh, 20 uh, milliamps or 0 to 50 volt kind of signals or 24 volt kind of signals to control certain uh, things or you may use many of the sensors like uh, temperature sensors or pressure sensors to uh, give alarms or give uh, some control signals there if you really want to verify those uh, those uh, sensors or the readouts are functioning properly then we have the uh, source and measurement devices which will help you to identify things then we have the vibration analyzers and uh, uh, laser shaft alignment tools this is basically for the electrical and mechanical application not for you that's why i'm skipping that straight away and then comes the uh, thermal images thermal images which basically can help you to identify the heat patterns of the devices and the installations and sometimes what happens if when you have both uh, electrical lines and the signal lines are uh, crisscrossing this heat can also uh, spoil your signal lines and those kind of temperature variation you can very easily identify using thermal images this will give you the complete heat map of it and then comes uh, video scopes if you have some uh, trenches or some unreachable locations where you want to see what is there inside this is a kind of endoscopy device a display unit with a extended uh, camera point which can help you to see what is there where you can't see or reach out and then comes the underground pipe and cable tracers. We have two versions. One is for the underground application and one is for the uh, wall uh, kind of applications where you can trace. It is not actually a fault uh, locator. It can actually trace the metallic cables and pipes uh, underneath or uh, behind a wall, how it is going. And you can track exactly where it is going and how it is going, whether there is any cut and all those things you will be able to identify using this and this will be a very good tool for you to uh, find out uh, the the cables lying in on below your uh, earth and then before you are constructing or doing any uh, maintenance work this can help you to identify the condition of the cables below you and similarly acoustic measure what i said uh, this is a, a new tool what we launched where it can 
detect the leaks, especially in the, I, I'm not sure whether pneumatics are used for any electrical, uh, any, any railway signaling, but in case if it is there, then it can be also used for detecting the leaks of pneumatic uh, lines. And this product also can be used for electrical applications where you will be using higher voltage levels. That is your substations and all, you will be using high voltage uh, transformers and systems where you can find a lot of partial discharge uh, issues. When the partial discharge are there, are there, it can spoil your high value equipments and assets. And if you really want to detect those kind of partial discharges, then this device can be used for that purpose also. And when it comes to calibration equipments, we have calibration equipments for all those measuring devices what we discussed and many thing more that even temperature calibrators, temperature sensors, all those things if you want to verify, then we also have the temperature sources or a calibrator for that. Electrical calibrators in RDSO, you are using some of these things already. And then we have humidity calibrators for a similar purpose and the pressure calibrator for that. These are all very high accuracy uh, standards for verification and testing of devices like measuring devices or the sensors and readouts. And we can also build uh, a complete test bench or a test system for such applications also based on your requirements. That is available in India from Fluke. We can build these test systems and support you in meeting your requirements. When it comes to the railroad applications or the railway applications, what we understand is uh, it is actually in, especially in India, the railways is one of the largest employer and uh, you have the oldest assets I, I feel that is the uh, either trains or even the signaling systems or even the uh, the tracks and uh, uh, every every asset of railway may be having an age of around 150 years I think and that's why you have a lot of challenges in hand and maintenance what you people are doing is the actual uh, safety measures or actual work to run this uh, show okay and for that you actually if you have the exact measuring devices i think you will be able to improve or you will be able to avert a lot of uh, accidents in that uh, manner and in that we we know there are, there are some of our tools like the non contact thermometers or multimeters clam meters air testers oscilloscopes and some of those products what i have discussed earlier can really go hand in hand with your purpose and when it comes to the the uh, test and measurement applications in your facilities uh, anyway I, I i don't know whether uh, all of you are from t uh, the signaling and uh, uh, telecom then i may be talking some of those things which is irrelevant to you but yes as a whole it is relevant to their indian railway and you can take a note and you may be able to share it with others also uh, when it comes to the the highly mechanical automotive or the the electrical nature of your facilities you need to do a lot of uh, measurement to ensure that the the show is going on or your machines or facilities are up and running and whether it is the track and signal lights or critical uh, the the track and signals are actually you are the backbone for ensuring that there is no uh, accidents in the in the railway right and that's why every signal or every system what you maintain is a critical part of the railway to ensure the safety of the passengers and safety of the assets and similarly passenger comfort you also need to verify the internal that is the uh, on coach uh, comfort of the uh, the passengers and there also there are a lot of electrical and instrumentation signals and uh, systems for which we have the product even including the uh, air quality tools we sell for the railway for maintaining the coaches and uh, uh, general testing applications. Then we have the the motors and engines and the traction equipments for your uh, uh, maintenance of all these uh, actions. Here, this again a critical things. Here we also supply a lot of uh, vibration lasers, power quality lasers, all those things, and then the power systems, which is actually supporting you for maintaining the entire thing. We also give product lines there. And when it comes to the, the uh, usages in our products usage in the railway systems, we have uh, various departments and various products uh, recommended or uh, given in the past. 
that is why if you can see this uh, list you can find the traction system we have sold every product of ours and then uh, rail equipment maintenance and uh, facility maintenance we have sold most of our products except uh, the process tools and similarly inspection repair shop operations we have sold majority of our products and substations yes majority of our products goes into your substations and then signal and tracks we supplied uh, our dmms our quality analyzers air testers and then uh, battery testers uh, ir thermometers insulation testers all those products okay we have at least uh, close to a dozen uh, different products going into indian railways or the railways in various uh, countries and when it comes to, I'll, I'll go through some of those uh, instruments which will be of a uh, good tool for you to consider also uh, multimeters, clamp meters, and insulation testers. That is, you have the multimeters, then the clamp meters, and then insulation testers. But this is a high voltage, uh, that is a 5 kV insulation I have shown. But in the upcoming slide, I also have mentioned the 1 kV models. I will come to that. Why you need this kind of electrical uh, tools is basically you have a lot of uh, devices, especially you are into the uh, safety uh, uh, maintenance where I think the axle counters are actually coming with the, the very important component as the uh, safety aspect to, to maintain the distance between the trains. And these axle counters are special uh, devices where you have you need to use high accuracy and you know, wider bandwidth DMMs to ensure that you are getting the exact count of this or exact condition of these axle counters. Similarly, troubleshooting of electronics and signaling systems, because most of your signaling systems are now electronics. And if you are, if you want to really test these things, you may require a precise multimeter to troubleshoot these electronics and signaling systems. Then the insulation weakness. I think what I understand from uh, my own interactions with your colleagues or your uh, the Indian Railway officials, that the cabling and the Installation of even the communication cables or the signaling cables, you need to test on a periodic basis. It may be six months or one year or three years kind of period. You have to do and then ensure that it is all working because insulation of any any uh, material, insulation can change because of various conditions. It can change because of over temperature, over voltage, vibration, or dust and uh, humidity. Okay, and all these things can act actually weaken the insulation property of cables and the, uh, the devices. That's why it is very, very important for you to ensure that the insulation is proper. And if the insulation is failed, then there is a possibility that you may get uh, accidents or even this device may not function properly. Let us understand the, the DMMs as a whole. We have different DMMs, as I said, we have the average multimeters to specialty multimeters. You can see the the performance and price of it. We have some of our uh, very good multimeters like 115, which is used by you in many numbers. This is the entry level uh, true RMS multimeter, but a very good workhorse and it can give you the best kind of uh, uh, performance for that price. And then we also have products like 87-V, that is 87-5, uh, which is basically a kind of specialty DMM, which is coming with a high bandwidth and uh, 287 kind of thing. When you go this side, you will find the price is going up and performance is going up. And he, here you can see even uh, Fluke 115 comes with a three year warranty with category three 600 volt safety rate. And this can be a good safety bet for you for your day to day applications. But if you if you really want to use this product for your axle counter kind of application, this may not work because this is this does not have the high frequency capability to do that measurement and the accuracy level also may be poor. And in such application, you may have to use a high performance DMs like a 87-5. And here you can see the safety rating is again gone up. That is category three thousand volt. It can measure up to thousand volt with a category three rated conditions or up to 600 volt, uh, it is recommended to use up to 600 volt in category four environment. That is how we recommend our instruments. And this also comes with a range of leads and then accessories. 
uh, and then a lifetime warranty and interestingly many a time when you purchase a uh, product you may not even consider how much warranty it is coming and you may com compare our product with uh, many others and they may be giving a one year warranty or two year warranty when we talk about lifetime warranty we are talking about the lifetime of the equipment and as a minimum of uh, condition we give a warranty of five to seven years and that is what we consider as the electronics lifetime that's why five to seven years of uh, warranty period for a, a buyer is a big thing and during that time you will be able to get a free service from us and in if you are you are taking a low end low cost uh, dmos with one year you may be replacing that in three or four times within that our warranty period time that means you will be losing a lot of money into that process itself and then comes the the high end dmm which this also you are using in numbers i i believe and this also comes with a lifetime warranty but this is a kind of overkill this may be an overkill for your application because this is a very high end high performance uh, dmm where it also can uh, where it can also meet uh, or do some trend capturing that is in case if you want to really capture the output of a sensor and you can capture like a graph or you can see multiple parameters in one like frequency and current or even you want a minimum maximum and average of a measurement all those things in one uh, screen you will be able to get and this we recommend for very specific uh, work like your uh, electronic maintenance or electronic troubleshooting kind of application where you can definitely get much more uh, features in this and your field application it may be a slightly an overkill but for your uh, laboratory applications where you nearly, uh, really want to do the troubleshooting and all this will be a better choice and here you, you will find this uh, as i said that is uh, it can capture the trends very quickly over a period of time and then the select ac filter to smoothen or find some of the critical signals like a vft or something if you have then you have the filter so that it will give a better uh, response to the noisy or changing signals and similarly it is a 50000 count dmm it is not a very simple dmm it is it can count up to 50000 that means uh, give very very accurate readings like 1.001 or 1.999 kind of voltage you will be able to measure and similarly it comes with an accuracy of 0.025% i think your axle counter uh, test must be of 0.5% accuracy and this gives you much much better accuracies and ac measurement accuracy goes up to or uh, the bandwidth goes up to 100 kilohertz okay and it also comes with a uh, bandwidth uh, limitation so that you can apply this dmms for various other things and again the warranty is lifetime and then we have another interesting product which can which is a combination of multimeter and a clamp meter and a uh, thermal imager in one this we are not sold much in india because uh, the price and the usage is limited for many many of the customers but this can be a good tool for uh, your kind of purpose where you want to really combine multiple things in a uh, in the field application where you can uh, use multimeter and uh, thermal imaging functions very clearly in a very uh, easy manner with uh, dmm itself then comes the clamp meters. I have seen a lot of uh, uh, Fluke 325 going into railway applications and many whether uh, directly or indirectly these products are coming to you uh, from Fluke. And this is a very, very interesting, very easy to use uh, uh, clamp meter which can go up to uh, 400 ampere and it has two ranges, 40 amps or 400 ampere. That's why you can use it for low current applications and high current applications and it can also measure 600 volt and other resistance continuity measurements also is available and that's why it's very easy to use and you can also see the category rating here it can go up to category uh, four uh, locations with 3000 up to 300 volt uh, measurement and category three locations up to 600 volt measurements then we also have supplied in some pockets of uh, railway uh, for low current applications we have our sister brand called Amprob and this amprob is basically uh, the the innovator or inventor of the clamp on current 
meters and that brand also is under fluke now okay and here this is a very very simple device where you may have to find some very low current measurements like uh, uh, in milliampere resolutions then this can give you very handy solution for that and that also with a better safety rating then comes the insulation testing insulation testing as i said this can really create uh, a lot of problems when the failed insulation in the electrical system can cause even fire accidents in the communication systems can create some kind of uh, short circuit and then it can spoil the devices or it can spoil the signaling itself that is the it may not function the way it's supposed to function that's why you have to have the insulation testing appropriately or as recommended by the standards to ensure that your facility is running appropriate for that we have uh, insulation testers for uh, up to 1000 volt up to 5k uh, 5 kv and up to uh, 10 kv kind of models we don't have the very high end ones but especially for the field usage uh, and for your ap application i believe that your voltage levels of insulation will be up to 1 kv and here we can share these two models these two models are actually very popular uh, insulation test uh, testers from us and you can see the insulation test voltages you can single press you will be able to get what voltage levels you want and then 1507 will be able to give you the voltage level even 03 can give you uh, two voltage levels 500 and 1000 volt here you can get multiple choices 50 volt to 1000 volt ranges and insulation range also is very high that is 10 giga ohm of uh, resistance in this model and 2000 mega ohm in this model okay that means you have the detailed uh, insulation portfolio analysis can be done using these products and uh, the pass fail analysis also you can do pa and da are also you can do but i think these are all you may not be doing it on a regular basis but uh, you can decide maybe you have a new cable or you want to just really understand what exactly the the pa and da are that is polarization index and uh, uh, high electric absorption rate then you can find those things also and it also both of these models comes with the auto discharge so that it will not hold any current when you are uh, doing the high voltage testing the dut may uh, absorb some current and then it may give a shock if it is not having the auto discharge in your tester and that is why you need to be very very careful in that uh, uh, choosing the high voltage testers or the insulation testers otherwise you may end up uh, getting shocks and then the resistance range and milliampere continuity range also is there that's why you can find the integrity of those lines the continuity is good or bad you can do and this product actually comes with a warranty of one year and we are going to launch a 2.5 kv insulation tester very soon to meet certain uh, customers and even railways application some of the applications like electrical side and uh, as i said the earth testers which is why the earthing is important means earthing is designing of earthing and ground system for railways or any uh, facilities whether it is railway or even a house or even a uh, commercial building or a factory the earthing is actually the base for every electrical and signaling systems or the communication systems if that is not good then you may not be able to find uh, the real uh, reason for failures okay that's why designing of earthing and maintaining of earthing is very very critical for all kind of application railways and maintenance and troubleshooting of existing earth pits and system for integrity and foolproof working that is if you have a earthing system you may be having an earthing system but uh, it may be 100 year old or 10 year old but how these earthing wires or earthing systems are working if you really want to find out yes you need to have a better test tools to do that and why it is very very important the earthing is very important if the earthing is not good the personal safety will be at risk that means uh, the earthing is basically to ensure that there is a leakage of current can go back to the earthing or when when the electricity start flowing from one point it will strive to reach the same source okay whatever may be happening it will reach there okay but what happens if there is a leakage or if the earthing is not proper whatever comes in contact with that lines or the leakages that will be the path of uh, 
short circuits and that will become the it can become even human being can become the path for electricity because our resistance is only 1500 ohms okay a human's resistance is very low that's why you get you are prone to get uh, electrical shocks and it may be a very difficult situation if the air thing is not proper and protection of equipments when the every electrically operated equipments to protect it you need a protective air thing and if that protective air thing is not proper or not connected then something goes wrong inside the device can actually give a leak uh, uh, on the its body or it can uh, kill the device itself and if there is a leakage on the device when somebody is uh, touching on that he also may get a uh, shock protection of systems improve the re reliability of power supplies that is that is utility or your own uh, electrical systems if your earthing is proper you will be able to uh, the reliability of your earthings the power system overall power system will be much better i am just touching upon these things because uh, otherwise we may take a lot of time and similarly what are those kind of testing or the air testers you need to have uh, what is the kind of air testers you should use for measuring soil resistivity okay soil resistivity means earthing is actually designed based on the soil resistivity the resistance of that soil present in that facility okay you may have to find that what is the resistivity of that and then decide what kind of air thing you need to do whether you need a pipe air thing or a mesh air thing or a plate air thing kind of thing and then state of the art technology digital air testers are actually used for accurate measurement you can use a digital uh, air testers or a analog air tester but it has its own advantages and disadvantages and ground resistance is directly proportional to the soil resistivity that means you first have to find what is the soil resistivity and then design it so that you can achieve the best uh, resistance levels and especially for some critical application and communication systems where people recommend at least very close to that is 2 ohms or less and some of your application it may be 5 ohms or less okay in calibration laboratories it may be 1 ohms or less kind of resistance you need to maintain in the electrical grounding systems what happens when when you use this product whether you are using an analog type or a very low cost type what actually uh, happening is here is a quick comparison of this the analog meters and digital meters usually the analog meters comes with a very poor accuracy okay and it can affect 25% of full scale error in that okay and this means when you are doing the analog instruments and then doing the air testing you may end up getting very wrong uh, confusing readings and that's why we always recommend a digital uh, meter it this true for even installation testing applications you better use a, a digital meter because the analog meters always comes with that parallax error okay you yourself will be uh, uh, adding some error into that and that's why uh, you can avoid if you lose uh, use a digital meter with these kind of unexpected unwanted uh, errors then voltage levels 250 volt hand cranking when you when you do generate a voltage using hand cranking it will be difficult for you to achieve that and it takes time and here it will be a kind of uh, voltage automatic generated internally using a microprocessor control okay that means you will have a very steady voltage and here you may get even the 5 percentage kind of accuracy okay here you may get the precise 30 volt or 50 volt what we generate and why we uh, limit this voltage as per the iec standards it is actually 50 volt is what is recommended for our testing and uh, sometimes as 250 volt also but uh, majority of the applications it, the precision of the voltage is very critical to ensure your uh, accuracy of your measurement and frequency can be different for uh, this one and here the frequency is fixed but here uh, there is a possibility of you getting multiple variation of frequencies so that you will be able to uh, test your systems with different frequencies to ensure that nothing is going wrong and spike resistance here it will not indicate anything but it will also compensate the spike resistance open circuit uh, here no indication for open circuit but all those kind of uh, indications and ease of use is available in digital multimeters uh, of air testers and then earthing is having different because earthing is 
basically many people even electrical engineers are understanding it very wrongly okay there are different methods of uh, uh, test methods like fall off potential method where you need to use multiple stakes that is three to four stakes and find out what is the kind of uh, soil resistivity of your location and for that you need to have multiple stakes and a device which is very properly pumping that voltage for this kind of testing and then actually what it does it actually pumps the voltage across two terminals and then measure the resistance between these two or the the potential difference between these two uh, stakes and then calculate the resistance and that is how the air testers work and uh, many a time when you are using a low end uh, instruments i know i have seen very many of our customer places they use some kind of 10000 rupees worth uh, devices which always gives a right reading and, and this uh, actually misleading one and they don't know what exactly they are doing what mistake they are doing and uh, when you are getting always right reading in everything you can be sure that the instrument is faulty okay i have proven it at least in half a dozen uh, customer locations where i have demonstrated and uh, that's why very confidently telling this and similarly selective methods when you have the the uh, transformer or sorry uh, telecom towers or something where you will have a lot of uh, uh, large poles and where if you want to use the measurement then you may have to use a uh, selective method that is use one clamp and two stakes you will use one clamp and two stakes to ensure what is the kind of measurement or the resistance you are getting okay here you are using four stakes okay and uh, fall off potential again uses two stakes you can have the same thing with two uh, stakes also and uh, selective testing using one clamp and then you have the stakeless method that is we have this uh, instrument coming with two clamps and four stakes and two reels of uh, cables to connect all these things so that what you can do is in case some places where you don't have facility to dig these uh, stakes then you can use these uh, clamps one is a, a sourcing clamp and the other one is a measuring clamp that's why it will measure both the it will inject the vol uh, voltage and it will also uh, measure the voltage from this and then get you the exact uh, earth resistance of that system because why why these four methods are important because you will have different facilities and all the places you may not be able to apply the same method okay in a building you may not be able to use the stakes there you may have to use the clamp in the field you can use the stakes okay but if the field if the uh, substation is completely concreted then you may not be able to use this okay that is the time you may have to use this kind of clamps and another method of uh, air uh, leakage testing is the ground loop resistance clamps where you can use this also is a kind of this clamp is actually two portion one is a sourcing clamp and the uh, the measuring clamp and this exactly working like the stakeless method okay two clamps and uh, but this is in a very small footprint and you will be able to just clamp onto any of those uh, earth uh, uh, wires and then find out what is the kind of leakage or uh, what is the kind of earth resistance all those things you will be able to find out and this is a very critical device which you can deploy in your system so that you can ensure a lot of uh, uh, malfunctions in your system then comes the battery and lasers which uh, i think we are close to an hour i will be taking another 10 15 minutes to uh, complete my presentation and then we can have uh, the q and a i hope it's okay and here you can see okay, the, yeah and uh, battery test uh, see most of the railway system or any of the uh, customers place batteries are the critical power and nowadays the batteries are going to be the regular power itself okay when you have more of uh, solar uh, generation or the wind generation then you may have to store it and then use it but batteries are the most neglected devices in any facility but what happens when the batteries are all of electrochemical devices it can deteriorate over a period of time because of various reasons okay because the chemical composition or the chemical uh, dielectric or the whatever uh, the uh, chemical inside a battery can change its behavior depending on various conditions the temperature the current uh, passing through it and the voltage levels and even the humidity all those things are 
Can, can you can you mute yourself so that it will be beneficial for us? Yeah, thank you. Uh, and because of this, the battery uh, measurement is actually very, very important. And what it helps you see helps to predict the health of batteries. That is, when you have an array of a bench of a battery for very purpose, maybe 10 or 15 numbers of batteries in a array. And if you if one fails, then the entire other batteries also can get defected in no time. That's why what you need is you need to have a periodic testing to ensure that you are not actually spoiling the entire bunch of batteries. Help to ensure that the emergency power backup is always functioning. That is, when the emergency power backup is not working, then the, you will be at dark. Your uh, system will completely come on uh, stoppage. Okay, then measures battery voltage, ripple, and why ripple is most of the time you will have a battery and a charger uh, connected to it. When this charger is initially supplied, you will have a better uh, ripple control or better output and all. You would have made some specification. But over a period of time, after some time, when the charger gets some problem, somebody will come and then uh, do the rectification. When the rectification is taken, what is the kind of ripple or what is the kind of output voltage it is giving? No one checks. And the ripple content in a, in a uh, DC power supply or a charger can literally kill the batteries because it's a AC signal. That's why it is always better to check the ripple also when you are doing the uh, battery testing. And the resistance, internal resistance, is it's actually not resistance. What we do the measurement is the impedance of the, uh, because uh, the batteries are not a resistance. Batteries are actually a capacitor. Okay, in the capacitor, the resistance is called uh, impedance. The AC resistance of the capacitor or the uh, battery can be measured using this. And it will also indicate how much power is uh, left out in that. And even today, I think you are using the specific gravity tester for majority of your battery testing. What yes, is it to get uh, Yes, please. Can, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah. Uh, interestingly, the uh, the specific gravity testers are actually meant good, or it will definitely good for open type of uh, batteries where you have the access to the uh, to collect that solution and then test what is the kind of uh, chemical composition is left out or the pH levels are there. But what happens if it is sealed? And I think today you may be using more of sealed uh, batteries. In such conditions, you may have to need, uh, have this kind of digital battery analyzers, which can help you to find the uh, underlying conditions or the electrolyte conditions or the uh, the heat conditions of uh, the batteries in uh, battery in, in your facilities. That is, even though it is all called as uh, sealed maintenance-free batteries, but it is nothing like a, a maintenance-free battery available. Uh, in the world. If you are not maintaining it, it will fail and you will be actually end up in uh, getting uh, failures and then uh, difficult times, down times in your systems. And this is a standard which uh, universally follow that is uh, IEEE 1188. This actually recommends what are those parameters you have to test in a battery and uh, at what periodicity. That is voltage and current Temperature, ohmic values, and ripple needs to be tested at different frequencies. You can see in the voltage and current also, voltage uh, over overall float voltage and charger output and current voltage. Okay, current and voltage is actually required to be tested in the charger output and the overall float voltage of your uh, battery system needs to be tested and DC float current also need to be tested because this is the string current or the overall current taken from the system. And this also is possible with our uh, battery tester because it also comes with a uh, clamp for measuring the DC current. And then the temperature. Why temperature is important? Because the ambient temperature and the, uh, the when, when the electrolysis process happens, there is a increase in temperature happens. And then you also have the ambient temperature. Okay, these two temperature can actually uh, deteriorate the electrolyte uh, electrolysis process as well as the electrolyte uh, 
inside a battery. Okay, that's why the temperature monitoring, especially in, in our system, the negative pole or negative uh, probe also equipped with a temperature sensor. That's why the temperature present in the negative pole you will be able to get. And then internal ohmic values of each cell is important to test. And the cell to cell terminal connection resistance is actually need to be tested. Okay. And ripple, as I said, it needs to be tested. At least ripple, you are we are giving an indication of uh, this uh, one year. And there are some other tests like uh, the uh, charger output and uh, output voltage and current. Monthly testing is actually required and the DC float current is recommended to be tested on monthly and ambient temperature is recommended to be tested on monthly. And there is a quarterly measurements like the overall float voltage, the current and voltage of charger, then DC float uh, current and ambient temperature, then temperature of uh, negative pole and cell uh, resistance. And interestingly, when you do all these tests, how do you verify whether uh, you can today you are verifying after two weeks or after a month also you are verifying but how do you keep that records that also we are uh, uh, sorting out by giving you an internal memory and it can store those data for a string of uh, batteries uh, for months together or you can even download it to a pc and then compare it in the timely basis that means you can see whether my batteries are deteriorating or improving or maintaining the same internal condition that you can be ensured that okay these batteries are not dying without your permission or with the, without your knowledge then comes the process tools which uh, is a very simple thing which may not be of much use to you but yes checking of temperature and pressure switches for readouts and sensors troubleshooting of uh, uh, braking systems or troubleshooting of uh, calibration of uh, engine control systems or even some of the activation actuators what you use for even in the older type of your uh, uh, signaling systems you may have some kind of arms mechanical arms which may be controlled through some kind of sensors in that conditions if you really want to find out whether that sensors are actually uh, functioning or it is giving the exact 4 to 20 milliamps or uh, some voltage levels then you can use this kind of uh, testers which are very handy things but very precise devices which can source or measure these kind of tiny voltages and currents and then the the thermal images the thermal images the some of the application i have given here the, it is actually uh, when you have thermal images you you can detect the thermal conditions because many a time what happens when you have more of wires and the cables and all in your panels you may not be knowing what is the kind of condition which which wire is actually ca carrying current and which is not carrying okay by looking at uh, with your uh, naked eyes you will not be able to find out but if there is a fault or a something or even if the current is passing through a cable that cable will be uh, more heated or uh, having higher temperature than the non-conducting one and that is why it is very easy for you to identify what is this uh, conditions of the cables and the subsystems even a switch or a cable or a relay or any of those things whether it is functioning or not even pcbs we have supplied thermal images to identify working pcb and non-working pcbs in various applications okay and all those things are possible using a thermal imager you can simply identify the hotspots and that too without touching those devices okay that is more important when you are having doubt whether there is overheating happening in some of the panels or a device then it is very simple you just open the panel and then uh, use a thermal imager like this and you will get a uh, temperature uh, thing you are not even switching off the system okay that's why your work will be much much easier and fast okay <laughs> and trouble free and then comes the thermal mapping that is when you feel the thermal mapping you can uh, see the complete picture is of thermal values okay every pixel of this image is actually a temperature value and especially in the, uh, the uh, railways you were a pantograph kind of uh, applications where you will have higher voltage and the loose contacts also can create problems and detection of even some of the isolators and all Dam isolator damage also can be used for the thermal measures can be used for those kind of applications and inspection of wheel and axles systems because heat is uh, present everywhere where it is moving or vibrating or electrical uh, electrical energy is passing 
then heat is predominant there and you will be able to identify those conditions some of the examples maybe in the transformer heating electrical side i have put it here in the yard or insulators circuit breakers or cooling fans if you want to really check what is the kind of uh, temperature variations and fuse plugs and then connections in uh, electrical or signal panels you will be able to get and then control panels what kind of things battery especially in the battery compartment or battery uh, banks where you have uh, this kind of high uh, temperature you will be able to easily identify and again if you have a, a 12 battery string and if you simply apply a volt uh, the a thermal imager you will be able to identify which battery is actually uh, more hotter in that string and with that also is very easy to identify that's why the comparison study of temperature variation is very very easy using a thermal imager then comes the power analyzer uh, this was one of the uh, most popular power analyzer which we have recently replaced with the new model and this can be used for the energy audit or the uh, load study of your uh, facilities and very importantly, in case if you are finding any of the signals, digital signaling systems or your electronic signaling systems are actually malfunctioning without uh, a clear reason, I can tell you it may be because of power quality or it may be because of uh, poor earthing. These two things which if you can ensure that is good, then I'm sure that majority of the time the the intermittent uh, malfunction of the relays or the signaling systems or the communication systems can be stopped. Okay, that's why power quality and earthing in a facility is very critical to ensure this kind of digital or electronic systems to function. And uh, troubleshooting of traction power systems also is important. That is anyway, that's a different uh, uh, thing altogether because why I'm telling this means in one of the uh, the crane manufacturer not crane manufacturer this uh, elevator manufacturing company uh, actually approached to us by saying that okay when we installed our uh, elevators in one of the metro stations uh, our control board is failing okay and uh, this failure happens uh, not regular but once in a while and we we given them a power quality and laser and a oscilloscope which can be uh, connected continuously and then take the readings when we analyzed, uh, what we realized that, okay, when the uh, trains comes and goes, that is when the train uh, reaches the, uh, substation, the station and then leaves, there is a kind of huge transient and disturbance in the uh, voltage present in their input. And that is actually creating the real problem. And one of the location, the earthing was not isolated. That is the earthing, but earthing interference was very high. That's why what we suggest to them, you better have a dedicated earth and then uh, identify once again what is happening this. And that is how they could actually safeguard their costly equipments. Because uh, nowadays every, every metro stations and all, they are installing and then maintaining it for at least a year or two. And they are finding it very difficult to answer all these things. And that is how the power quality can spoil your electronics and digital systems. <clears throat> As I said, the uh, the oscilloscopes, this is just like any other oscilloscope, but it is completely battery operated and handheld so that any of the oscilloscope application you think you can use my battery operated oscilloscopes and it can be a very handy tool for taking to the field and then do the rectification. We also have another model which is very sleek, just like a multimeter you will get and all our oscilloscopes the we call it a scope meter because it is a combination of oscilloscope and a multimeter that's why you can carry a oscilloscope for doing the multimeter function and uh, the recording function and the oscilloscope function and it is much it is safest oscilloscope in the world okay as of today <clears throat> then as i said uh, the uh, air leak applications the pneumatic pressure is used in many of your applications where the leaking uh, air or the, <clears throat> the compressed air can actually give uh, misoperation of your braking systems. And this can be detected because your uh, pneumatic lines will be running uh, meters together, okay, 100, 200 meters together. 
and through various uh, networks and bogies and other things, then if you really want to check where exactly these leaks are happening, then you will be able to detect it very quickly like this. It's just like a thermal imager screen or a, see this is the instrument what you are doing and this is the way it is detecting the leaks, just like a spot from where that leak is coming, okay, like this. So easy for you to detect the leaks or even the partial discharge you want to detect, same way you will be able to detect the partial discharge. And this device, it's a, we call it as acoustic imager or the uh, sonic imager. And this comes with uh, 64 acoustic uh, sensors and uh, a camera so that it will, uh, from the entire field of view, it will capture those uh, uh, sound waves and then put uh, from where it is coming in the uh, visual image. That is how it uh, helps you to find the leaks. And I am just moving from uh, this to the completely the communication side. That is when you also have uh, the uh, the digital rail infrastructure where you have more of our communication networks. Okay, you may be using a uh, MVB or WTB or ECN kind of that is Ethernet based or the uh, wired communication networks for your system. Okay, in such uh, systems or even a, a digital signal that is railway signaling you may be using some kind of uh, networks, okay? And railway ticketing mechanism, this also is now computerized or digital, okay? Even your uh, security systems, which is again uh, connected, okay? Station annunciation systems, this also will be connected to through Ethernet or a communication line, okay? These are all actually, even Wi-Fi communication also need a connector or a uh, OFB cables, that's optical fiber cables, right? And uh, when you have this uh, uh, communication systems, it is very, very important for you to ensure that your data cabling is very, very important. And if the cabling is not proper, or if you are not doing a maintenance of the cabling, then you may end up uh, getting data losses, or you may end up getting some erratic uh, information. Okay, to avoid that, what we give, that is we can give, uh, uh, See, good quality products can be destroyed by bad installation practices. That is, you may be having best instrumentation or best uh, uh, products for uh, installation, but the bad practices can actually spoil your network equipments or your uh, devices or your uh, system itself. Okay. And to do that, what will you test in a copper installation? That is, copper installation, when I say you have the Ethernet cables or the cables which is uh, metallic or the, the copper cables what you are connecting. Here you have the uh, copper communication link will have the connectors on both sides. It can be any kind of the, uh, two pair or four pair cables uh, in the middle with the connectors that RJ45 or uh, any of those kind of uh, plugs you will be using in both the ends. And then these are all the uh, components what you will be using in the networking systems. But how do you test these things? Okay, you may have some switches, you may have some uh, uh, connectors, cables, all those uh, advanced uh, systems, right? You also have uh, communication panels. Okay, here, uh, if, if it is optical fiber, again, you have this two different kind of things like a multi-mode uh, cable or single mode cables and uh, many types of connectors. It all depends on your uh, what kind of system you are connecting or what kind of uh, standards you are following. Then you may have different kind of uh, connectors also. But testing is actually the, the capability of fiber optic cable to support high speed data is based on measurements of cleanliness, loss, length, polarity, and optimum optical return loss, okay? These are all the parameters you may have to even test for the optical fibers. Okay, if it is not properly clean, that is, it's actually a kind of uh, pipe, right? If it is having some dust or something in the end or inside, then you may not get the proper data transmission. Similarly, the length and uh, this one needs to be maintained appropriately. And then the polarity you need to maintain and the return losses because the how much loss is happening in the cables because quality of the cable or the uh, constructional issues or even the the installation practices can create some quality issues in this or the return losses also will be high. That's why you have to test these uh, cables 
to ensure appropriate data communication and loss of uh, uh, data or efficiency of communication okay what we offer this is actually coming from fluke networks this is a product called uh, dsx 5000 cable analyzer which is a industrial ethernet uh, cable tester or cable analyzer is what we talk and here you can do all kind of cables used for industrial ethernet or ethernet communication and it can also uh, have an optional fiber optic modules that means you will be able to do both uh, fiber optic as well as the ethernet or the the copper cable uh, communication systems testing using these two testers and then comes the uh, another product which is a uh, link liq kit that is link iq kit which is uh, basically again for the metallic or the cable uh, copper cable applications for a similar network that is for the networking or the cable uh, applications but i think this may be more useful for your application for railway okay but anyway this is not my expert area definitely and uh, in case if you have more questions i can get back to you or whatever i can answer here i will be able to answer in this and uh, i think this is the last slide for me and when it comes to fluke why you need to choose fluke definitely these are all the few reasons uh, some six reasons I have kept because accurate and reliable uh, instruments. Then you have uh, all our products are designed and certified for highest safety or the and the standards. That's why you can be you can trust us on the best and designed around the customer in mind. That means the most of our products, many of our products are actually designed based on the customer feedbacks. Even we change our designs. If the customer is telling no, no, it is uh, this is not the way it's supposed to work. In fact, we have conducted two VOCs very recently for our upcoming product. Even three of the customers from India actually contributed to that. That's why every customer of ours actually contribute to our new products. Okay, easy to use and rugged. That's why you have the best uh, and easy to use products. Solution not not for the not the products. We don't give a simple product for you or a box for you. We actually address a problem and give you a solution. That is our idea. And then when it comes to the uh, peace of mind, we also give you the best uh, industry standard warranties. Okay. Some of our products, the most used DMMs comes with uh, uh, lifetime warranty. And uh, many of our products comes with a three years warranty. And some comes with one year and two years. That's why uh, when you want to choose Fluke, you have a reason for that. Okay, and we have the product for every application what you can find. Okay, these are all from me. Thanks a lot for your time. I'm sorry I have ex uh, exceeded some 20 minutes uh, in the presentation. I'll be open for uh, questions. Thank you, sir, for the excellent content. Thank you. And there are a few questions in the chat box, sir. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there is a yeah. question from Mr. Tilak Chan. Okay. Uh, he's asking, can some basic optical measurements be incorporated in multimeters? It's a fantastic uh, input. Uh, anyway, this uh, optical measurement uh, device, what we have shown in the last slides, it will be actually helping you to do many of these uh, tests. In case if you need it in a multimeter, it's a good input. What I will do is, uh, I can even give this feedback to our uh, engineering team. Maybe in future we will have that kind of tool. Thanks for giving that feedback. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for putting it forward, sir. This was this question was from me. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That thank thanks for that feedback. Okay. Maybe yes, if look, this this is a real uh, requirement. We can even incorporate that because we have both these capabilities and uh, we have independent devices for that. Okay. Yes, sir. Almost, uh, almost yeah. everything is shifting to optical fibers in as far as the telecom is concerned, sir. Correct. Yeah. That's why maybe it's a it's a good good ask, and hopefully Fluke will give you those kind of devices. Okay. I will also check with the Fluke network team whether they have anything already available. Okay. Which is more than a OF uh, tester. We can we can uh, come back to you on this. Yes, sir. 
thanks sir we 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 actually we actually feel that requirement while working on the field true true so this, this is actually a good thing what i will do is i will pass it to them uh, because we also are uh, having some some kaizen happening for the new products in that also i will present this and i may reach out to you maybe uh, i hope uh, uh, you people will share me your contact details so that i can uh, can i can i get your name sir what is your uh, so my name is tilak chand i am from northern railway delhi division okay tilak chand delhi division okay so tilak ji you may uh, please share your mobile number and email uh, in the chat box and uh, you can also give this suggestion in our feedback form uh, the link for the same i have given in the chat box so please do share it there Yeah, that will be great. Okay. And sir, the next question is from me. And during the uh, discussion over DMMs, yeah, you have told us there there are cert certain category numbers. Yeah. So can you please elaborate over this? See, actually, it is the safety category uh, is what I was uh, referring. One second, sir. My happened. System is no. See, actually, if you if you look at the first few slides, see the category rating is basically the uh, safety rating of uh, devices. Okay, when any equipment, as per IEC sixty six one zero one zero, sorry uh, six, yeah six one zero one zero, that is safety standard. You need to Test or the any equipment meant for electrical voltage or current measurement, it needs to be tested for or designed and tested for electrical safety. Why it is required? The category four rate they have classified different working areas based on uh, some studies. That is, if the high voltage area is there, like a yard or a uh, railway line where the high voltage. Uh, transmission line or a distribution line or a transformer is present where the expected high voltage is uh, like 8 kv and above that means it comes under the category 4 okay and if you are using a multimeter which is designed for category 2 this category 2 area the expected voltage is only 4 kv okay and if a multimeter or a test device is uh, tested for that 4 kv and you are taking that 4 kv meter here what happens here sometimes the voltage will be present at 8 kv and the instrument will fail okay this voltage present what i am talking is the transients okay any because of any uh, fault or because of a uh, what you call a lightning strike or because of uh, some other power quality reasons you may expect a high voltage pulse in these areas it can be above 8 kv here above 6 kv here above 4 kv here and above 2 kv here and your operating voltage of a multimeter is only 600 volt or 1000 volt right what happens when this kind of high uh, transients comes the uh, insulation property of the multimeter or the cable can fail and then you will be exposed you will be the first contact coming to the current or voltage and it will be a safety hazard i hope uh, uh, you are able to follow me yes sir and you will find this reading in multimeters uh, body itself but many a time people the low cost models also gives that uh, uh, safety rating category 3 like that it will be mentioned there but they would they will not be having any listing or a certificate from a third party that's why it is better to ask for a uh, listing certificate or a test certificate for this kind of safety from the manufacturer so that you can ensure that you are getting a safer product for that so sir this impulse voltage which is given in kv yeah it is a transient voltage it's a transient voltage it is okay. actually iec iec uh, classifies that okay you need to apply i think 10 pulses per second or something for 60 uh, second or something you have to do it that is how you need to test these uh, devices okay 
so the this is applicable only for dmms or for all types okay. of meters sir all kind of measuring devices used in uh volt the electrical systems okay sir okay it's a very it good point a, yeah it can be a multimeter it can be a clamp meter it can be a uh <coughs> can be a power analyzer it can be even sometimes air tester also classifies but air tester is not mandatory to have this because you are not measuring the voltage yes sir. okay in air tester you are actually measuring the resistance that's why it need not to be with the uh, category rating but for other measurements if you are measuring voltage and current definitely you need it to have yes okay like in live conditions if you are measuring anything then it is important yes sir okay yes sir uh, now the next question is from mr hari h das yeah uh, he wants to ask what is mean by rcd testers yeah rcd testers are actually uh, you you have the residual current devices like elcbs right uh, those kind of devices are actually used to <coughs> used in your buildings even in at ho your home you have the rcd at the incoming side right if something goes wrong your uh, geyser uh, have a short circuit your uh, elcb trips off right and that elcb how do you test it because all the elcbs or the rcds needs to be uh, tripped well within that 30 uh, milliampere current if the 30 milliampere current leakage is happening through the earth and within some uh, few millisecond this device should trip <clears throat> usually none of us test these devices when we install it or we will wait till some tragedy happens to find whether it is working or not that time will be too late and in actual best practices in europe and us and even in australia there is a safety standard put in place and they say that every building should have a lcbs and rcds and you need to test it every 6 months or a year okay in india we are don't even mandate the lcbs for buildings okay some states it's there some states it's not there and this is same for maybe in railway also some of the systems or even were coaches what happens when there is a short circuit in the coach will it trip off it should trip off right otherwise it can electrocute the entire passengers okay how do you test those uh, uh, devices which is actually tripping the system okay this is the device actually i can show you that device here yeah this is the device which actually injects the leakage current to the rcd or the lcb and then gives you the uh, timing how fast it is uh, tripping it verifies whether it is tripping and it also tells the loop impedance of it how much is the loop impedance and how fast it is tripping at what current so that is this can, is this yeah. pre pre installation testing yes pre installation as well as for maintenance you need to do in india we have a customer who is regularly buying this and he use more than uh, 50 units in my knowledge it may be more and who is actually elevator manufacturer okay it's a european elevator manufacturer who buys this product exclusively to test his tripping circuit because in elevator also uh, it is all metallic right if there is short circuit or something the person on the elevator can actually uh, get killed that's why what they do during the installation even during the uh, testing at that factory they use my product and verify whether their uh, elcb or that tripping circuit is working or not mm, okay okay and uh, many okay. many customers also are there government customers also are using but there is no standard as of now in india ah oh, okay yeah okay clear sir clear sir yeah thank, thank you, you. Yeah. any other question sir hmm. if any participant wants to ask any further questions you may please ask yeah if if there is no no more questions i think we can close it and yes, i'll be happy to uh, answer any questions or receive any suggestions and you can even give some suggestions or uh, feedback on my presentation also in case if you feel that okay i need to improve or uh, i need to uh, do something 
or on the content you can give us uh, inputs that will be a great thing because i will also i can also learn and i can also improve uh, and it will be a kind of help how you are giving it to me in in person in personally i would say okay thanks a lot my number is here and uh, mr ji has uh, my email id also i can be reached out anytime yes sir so thanks a lot thank you sir and uh, finally i have shared a feedback link in the chat box so please share your feedback about this webinar through the same as it encourages us to organize more such events and thanks to prabhakaran sir and his team for today's useful interactive and informative webinar over this relevant subject i would also like to thank each and every participant for sparing their valuable time and for being an active part of this webinar thank you very much thank you